The process of migrating from Windows to Ubuntu should not be too hard. You will quickly be doing everything you did on Windows using only your new Ubuntu desktop. This requires you to abandon a few habits and adopt new ones. I will outline on this video some basic information that will help you to focus on the similarities and differences in order to make an efficient transition. The video is purely descriptive and we will see in more depth how to use each of these functionalities in the rest of the tutorials. Let's start by taking a look at the desktop. On Windows, you have at the bottom of your screen a taskbar where you can see your applets on the right, your open applications in the middle, and a start button on the left. On Ubuntu, this bar is located on top rather than at the bottom, and there is an additional bar on the left. The top bar also has the applets on the right, but not the open or minimized applications. When you open an application in Ubuntu, you will notice that a small white arrow will appear next to the application icon on the bar at the left. The top bar will be displaying instead the menus of the application that is on focus. Notice that by default the menus of an application are located on this top bar rather than on the window of the application itself, but you can change this if you want to. We will see how to do this in this tutorial. The menu appears when you hover your mouse over the top bar or when you press the ALT key. Otherwise the menu will be hidden. If you have the HUD interface, the ALT key will bring up a search bar for searching into the application and system menus. The Start button on Windows displays information about programs, files, configurations and user accounts. On Ubuntu this is divided in two menus. The Dash Home at the top left hand side of your screen to find files and applications and at the top right hand side a menu for system configurations and user accounts. On the Dash Home you can either type what you're searching for like in Windows 7, or browse the content like on previous versions of Windows, using the bottom icons and clicking on one of the rows titles to show all the content. Among the differences between the two operating systems, you will notice that your disks and folders have a different organization. First of all, the disks do not have letters like C or D, the main disk, or the C drive, is called computer. Inside your computer you will see several folders that you will gradually get to know. Additional disks, like for example CDs or USB pen drives, are mounted into the media folder and receive names with several letters or numbers, like for example disk1 or SDA1. If you want to see the programs you have installed, instead of looking for a Program Files folder, you would rather use the Software Center to search, install and uninstall programs. If you really want to know the folder, your programs are likely to be located under USR, Share, Applications. The user personal files and settings are stored into the home folder. The home folder is the one you will use most of the time and you probably won't need to touch on the other folders, at least at the beginning. They are managed by the system and that goes beyond the scope of this tutorial. Another important difference between GNU Linux systems like Ubuntu and Windows is the way to install software. We will see in more details how to install software during this tutorial, but just keep in mind that instead of searching the web and downloading an .exe file, you will do everything with a program called Software Center. As a Windows user, you might be surprised to see that Ubuntu does not come with antivirus software. You can download one if you want, but it's not necessary. 
GNU Linux operating systems are quite secure and very few people feel the need to have an antivirus at all. Last but not least, the Windows shortcut Control alt delete to launch the Task Manager in Windows and quit unresponsive applications is replaced by the System Monitor. In Ubuntu, the shortcut Control alt delete triggers the Logout window and not the System Monitor. When an application is not responding, its window will become darker and a pop-up alert will ask you if you want to force quit it or not. Alternatively, you can press Ctrl F2, type Xkill, and then click on the window of the application you want to force quit. We will see during the tutorials how to change the shortcuts if you still prefer to launch the system monitor with Ctrl Alt Delete. In the rest of the tutorials, I might also talk about equivalences and differences between operating systems, but most of the time I'll just be talking about how Ubuntu works. I hope this was helpful to better understand your new environment, and please, write a comment if there are things you would like me to add to this video. Check out the links beneath this video for more details of the migration process as documented by the contributors of the Ubuntu help.